Hello, this is Neil Baum from New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'd like to conduct a brief history lesson about ancient Greek physicians and their impact on modern contemporary healthcare, particularly in urology. Isaac Newton said it so well about standing upon the shoulders of giants and that is exactly what we are doing today. We are standing on the shoulders of these ancient Greek physicians. The history of medicine is over 2000 years old and we have evolved from those who were magicians and shamans, soothsayers, and even barbers. This video will review early Greek medicine and the impact of early Greek medicine on modern healthcare. A brief discussion about our symbols or our insignia. Asclepius was the son of Apollo, the Greek god Apollo, is considered the first physician and he was the god of healing. And there were temples all over Greece that were centers of medical advice and healing. The story goes that a snake entered the temple and Asclepius killed the snake with his staff. He put herbs in the snake's mouth and brought the snake back to life. And that early insignia was the single snake around the staff. The caduceus, which we know today, consists of two snakes around the staff. And the story goes that Hermes, the god of commerce, was given a staff from Apollo. And he used the staff to separate two fighting snakes. So the staff with two snakes is now the symbol of medicine. It was used in the early 20th century by the U.S. Army as a symbol for the Army Medical Corps. And currently, the staff with the two snakes serves as the symbol of modern medicine. Prior to Hippocrates, the belief was that illness was divine punishment. It was illness as a result of going against the gods and healing when it occurred was a gift of the gods. These ancient healers were able to commune with the gods and they were able to expel the demons using uh, spells, incantations, and if necessary, sacrifices to ward off the evil spirits. Hippocrates, born on the island of Kos, uh, in 460 BC is considered the father of modern day medicine. He was able to separate uh, the actual practice of medicine from other disciplines such as mythology and astrology. And he was the one that debunked the gods and demons as the cause of disease. And he was the one that attributed disease to uh, natural causes such as bad air or miasma. The ancient Greek doctors believed that health could be controlled by balancing the four humors, phlegm, blood, and yellow and black bile. Also to be considered was the geographic location of the patient, the social class of the patient, and even the diet. And it was Hippocrates and his school of medicine that emphasized that the importance of balance between the four humors and if there was sickness or illness, the role of the physician was to restore that balance. Hippocrates is well known for the oath that every physician takes upon graduation from medical school, but it was Hippocrates who emphasized the relationship with the doctor and the patient and suggested that there were three factors in medicine consisting of the patient, the physician, and the disease. And it was the patient who was able to make the decision regarding treatment and not relegating that to the gods. 
The physician, he said, was the servant of science and the patient must do what they can, a role of involving the patient to fight the disease along with the assistance of the physician. It was Hippocrates who also discovered the difference that men and women have regarding diseases. And some diseases that affected uh, men were not associated with women and vice versa. He also recognized that diet and proper nutrition and even exercise, lack of exercise caused disease. He also identified the role of mental health and that the mind may play a role in healing. Next, as far as the great uh, ancient a physician was Galen, who was born in Greece, but moved to Rome, and he was the physician to the emperors. He had theories that dominated Western medicine for over 1,300 years. His uh, uh, discovery of the physiology of blood circulation, that is uh, arteries, and then uh, capillary circulation, and then veins lasted until 1628, when William Harvey then discovered the proper physiology of the circulation. Greek medicine had a great impact on modern healthcare. The Greek medicine uh, of over 2000 years ago was the basis of today's Western medicine. And it was Greek medicine that focused on proper diet, nutrition, use of exercise, importance of sleep, and bowel and bladder symptoms. And he, uh, it was Greek medicine that identified the importance of balance inside the body as well as the environment. And it was ancient Greek medicine that identified the importance of trust between the patient and the physician. I am very impressed to, that even today, the two initials after our name, M period, D period, that alone generates trust. We can have strangers walk into our practice that we have never seen or met before, and they will share with us the deepest secrets that they have that they wouldn't share with others and that they will allow us to examine them all because we have those magical initials after our name, M period, D period. The ancient Greek physicians looked for causes or why patients became ill and it was not relegated to the gods. They focused on what role the patients had that they could restore their health with proper nutrition and uh, importance of exercise. The ancient Greek physicians identified 2000 years ago that if you blame the, phys the patient, that did not help. Even today, if we blame patients for their illness, we are losing our connection uh, with the patient. Patients do well if we are good educators and explain to patients why they are sick and why they must follow our suggestions. The ancient uh, Greek doctors were very similar to some doctors today, and that is they were very egotistical and have had overinflated opinions of themselves. However, we all know that in the last two or three decades, the internet has leveled the playing field. Patients uh, in the past relied on physicians for knowledge, but today, Patients can have as much knowledge as a physician by going onto the internet and having as much information and education as a physician. So modern doctors, 
it is imperative that we have to change our attitudes of diagnosis and treatment if there is new evidence that provides that the older ideas are no longer working. We have to uh, uproot the status quo, and that is always hanging on to old ideas if they are not valid or practical. I have been in practice for over four decades. And in my four decades, I've identified several, what I refer to as game changers. Uh, those uh, game changers were shockwave, the use of Viagra for treating erectile dysfunction, robotic surgery, and minimally invasive surgery that is used today for treating the enlarged prostate gland. Another example of a game changer was Abe Morgenthaler who debunked the use of testosterone. If you were trained in uh, before the early 1980s, you heard the expression that giving a man testosterone was like adding gasoline to a fire. Dr. Morgenthaler uh, bravely uh, reached out and said and identified the uh, saturation theory of uh, using testosterone, that it was applicable to giving that to patients and even identified that we could give testosterone to patients with prostate cancer. This is again, an example of a modern day game changer. So the bottom line is that we should never forget what we have learned from those ancient Greek doctors. It is on their shoulders that we stand to this day. Well, I hope you have found this video on the history of ancient Greek medicine. And if you would like a copy of the slide deck or the white paper on Greek medicine, I can easily be reached at the email address shown on this last slide. Thank you.